Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about rebuilding the drive shaft on the X164 Mercedes 320 uh, Blue Tech. The same discussion is going to apply to the ML, the W164 and to the R class, which is a W251. It's the same drive shaft um, and today we're going to be replacing this central bearing on it. it. It's a bit of a strange topic to discuss because if you call Mercedes, this is a non-serviceable item. All right, the central bearing is not meant to be replaced on these cars. In fact, you're supposed to buy the entire drive, uh, drive shaft all in one piece. On the ML, uh, W164, that drive shaft is about 1200 bucks. On the GL, which is, I'm guessing, slightly longer, the drive shaft is actually $1,400. Um, that's a problem because the central bearing itself is 50 bucks. Now, it's not advertised as a Mercedes part. You cannot buy this from the dealership. And in fact, if you call them, they're just going to flat out tell you, you can't service this. This is not serviceable. So what I'm going to try and do today is save you a little bit of money uh, by showing you how to replace this. Uh, we're going to take apart the drive shaft, even though it's not meant to be, um, and we're going to replace the central bearing. I've also got uh, a new flex disc that goes at the back of the drive shaft um, at the rear diff, and the front bolts right into the transmission. Um, this is going to be a fairly quick video. Um, if you want to see more about the work we're doing on the car, click here uh, so you can catch up on the playlist, everything we're doing with the G Lander. Uh, but today we're going to focus uh, specifically on the central bearing and try and see if we can uh, save ourselves some money going forward uh, and help you guys do this service by yourself. Let's go. Before we go uh, ripping the drive shaft apart, let's take a quick look as to why we actually have to do the service. Now, uh, I mentioned in the previous episode that I've been hearing a whine coming from the drivetrain, uh, which is speed related. Um, I had a quick look. Uh, we did a lot of servicing on the uh, transmission, on your oil. You saw me do the uh, rebuild of the uh, transfer case. But um, when I went to put the uh, drive shaft back, uh, you know, the engine's back in the car, transmission's all inside. When I went to put the drive shaft uh, back in, I started having a bit of an issue under the car, you know, kind of putting the, um, the CV joint back. So I decided to take the drive shaft out just so I can service this a little bit better and make my life easier going in the car. So once I took the, uh, the drive shaft out, I started looking at the central bearing, which I probably should have done earlier and quickly noticed that um, it's actually in a pretty rough condition. Now the vehicle is at about 320, 30,000 kilometers and uh, this bearing has definitely seen better days, as you can tell. Particularly right there where it's ripped or ready to fall apart in any, in any given time. I went obviously, uh, you know, we've done plenty of this on Sprinter, stuff like that. It's usually fairly straightforward to get it from uh, Mercedes, cold Mercedes, like I said, not a part uh, that's available for this. Uh, I did find this bearing on uh, eBay that I ordered. It took forever for it to actually get here. It is the same unit as the one that's on the vehicle. So uh, right off the bat, we're not in a terrible shape. At least it looks the same. But there are no instructions and there is no manual to do this. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and try and replace this today. What you need to keep in mind, this is a balanced uh, unit, right? So when, whenever we start taking these things apart, you have to mark, 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 mark everything because what you want to make sure is that everything comes back together in the exact same position that we took it apart. I am uh, definitely guilty of not doing this. Um, so I'm going to you know, put some extra effort today to, to, to mark everything as we're taking it apart to make sure that once everything is done, we actually improve the situation and don't make it worse by introducing a new vibration into um, the vehicle. If your central bearing is, is actually decent, it doesn't need to be replaced. The flex disc is fairly straightforward to replace right on the vehicle. You don't have to take this whole thing apart. You undo the bolts at the back, pull it forward a little bit, swap the disc, and then uh, go from it. Mine is not terribly bad. This is the new one. Um, I'm starting to see some cracks around the, uh, the metal inserts there. Uh, so I figured, you know, for, you know, 50 or 60 bucks or whatever this thing is worth, uh, might as well do it since I already have the shaft off. Now, what are we going to do today? Um, this joint here looks exactly like this one that's at the front. So this one bolts to the transmission. Um, this sort of same unit is what's hiding back here. This is a, sort of a pressure fit. Um, it, like I said, it's not meant to be open, but what we're going to do, this is a dust boot of some sorts. So you can tell right there, it's kind of kind of rubber thing. You've got a metal uh, sort of retaining ring here holding the dust boot to the shaft. 
So we have to peel the dust boot off. We have to decouple the front and the back side of the shaft, and we have to push the bearing out of the shaft and put the new bearing in. Okay, let's start off by cleaning up this groove now. The more we look at it, the more we're gonna notice it's gonna have a bit of an issue here because it looks like what's happened is the boots pressed in the shaft and then it's clipped down. So there's a bit of a groove going in here. So to pry this open, we're gonna have to kind of come in here and, and sort of open this slip up a little bit. But let's clean it up first and get a little bit of a better view. Now that I've cleaned this out, you can actually see um, sort of little cuts into the boot every, what is that, every 45 degrees. So it's not one continuous piece, I guess it's cut like this so that it clamps in a little bit better. So I'm going to very gently try and pry this open. Obviously the idea is to not damage this as much as possible because we're going to have to put it back and uh, hammer it into place. All right, so it's not so bad. So here you can see the original lip and this is where I started opening it up a little bit there. So um, didn't really damage anything in particular. Um, obviously get a, a nice thin screwdriver. So once you have the sort of corner out, you can start pushing the screwdriver down so you can kind of uh, open up the lip. All right, let's finish this. All right, that was fairly easy. So take your time, nothing too complicated about this. Pry this open a little bit, gentle, no need to uh, rip it out. It takes very little to actually clear this groove right here. So as you can tell, the cap comes over and then it's forced into the groove here to lock it in place. One thing to keep in mind, you've got an O-ring right there that prevents moisture from going in through the crack here into your actual joint. You can tell there's clearly water going in the groove because this is all rusted out. But the O-ring is supposed to prevent that. Now, putting this back together, we're gonna have to put a little bit of silicone um, here to seal this O-ring back. And uh, actually, once we're all done, we're gonna put a little bit of silicone around it here to make sure there's just no moisture going in after we repair this. So let's clear the boot out of the way and uh, decouple the two shafts. You have a bit of a clamp here that holds the boot in place. So we have to take the clamp out. We're gonna have to replace it after. This is not reusable, obviously. So just be careful not to tear the actual boot. It's pretty important. With the joint cleaned out, um, it's a bit tricky. So if you don't really know about this, you're gonna have a hard time finding it. But to take this apart, what you're looking for is a lock ring that's in a groove right up here. So it's a little hard. This camera doesn't usually focus very good close up. So I'm gonna try and take a picture of it for you guys. It's, it, it's right up here. So there's a lock ring that holds the entire CV inside the casing here. So you gotta pop this ring out and then everything will come out. Okay, we've marked everything up. 
we should be able to put everything back the way it was once we get it out. Now, what's going to happen is this is probably going to fall apart. So you want to make sure you collect all your parts. The O-ring that we just pulled out holds the balls in place. So with the O-ring out, the whole assembly just comes right out. So make sure you mark everything before you do that. Nice and easy, the assembly comes out. So again, make sure everything is marked up the way it's supposed to go back in. We're gonna take this piece off because we have nothing to do with it right now. Just clean it up. We have to focus on this and make sure that this goes back in the way it was supposed to. To get the boot out of here so we can slide the bearing, we're gonna have to get this piece out. Most important, it has to go back in the way it came out. We don't wanna rotate it, we don't wanna turn it uh, or anything like that. I don't think anybody's ever gonna believe me if I actually told them uh, what we're doing right now, so I might as well show you. We have to get the shell, this thing, um, off the shaft in order to get the boot and the bearing out. There's no visible locking ring, which is kind of weird because if you look on the other end of the shaft, um, there's a nice lock ring right on the front of that that you can just remove and this thing will come out. I'm not really sure why they didn't put it that way. Maybe it's meant to not be removed and didn't want to bother. doesn't really matter. Um, we tried a bunch of different stuff. We tried to just force it out. Maybe it was pressed in, but it's not. There, there is a lock ring and you can see it. If you poke your head from the top down, you can kind of see the ring right in the splines there. No visible easy way to get it out. We tried a couple of different ways and <laughs> it looks like the paper clip technique might prove to be uh, the best way um, out of this. So what we've got is we've got a bearing puller and kind of supporting the bottom of this. And we've pressed the lock ring in with these paper clips, which is about the only thing that fits in there. Um, and now the idea is the lock ring is released and we can just pull the bracket or bearing shell there straight up. So let's give that a try. All right, this is pretty unbelievable. I don't know if you guys can see this. I think we can probably get these out now. What is this baby crying in the background? Here we go. Let's go up. Nice and easy. There's the ring right there, guys. So there's no good way for you to close that except for the uh, Eurotrash Motorsports paperclip technique. <laughs> oh, man. As if we just use a paperclip to fix this uh, Mercedes. All right, let's uh, clean this up and uh, continue this assembly. The cone on the bearing is right here faces the front of the vehicle, so the bottom of the shaft we're working on right now. This is where we're going to be getting now.
Next thing is the boot. Before I go all the way down and let the lock ring uh, come out, make sure that the marks are in the right place. Obviously, I want to have this exactly where it was before. All right. So we've marked this up pretty good. This has to go back exactly like it is right there. And we have to put the balls and the outside shell. Okay. So the balls actually fit quite quite easily. Make sure everything's aligned once again. Uh, you have to pull the back out as far as you can without dropping the balls, so the whole thing just slides, uh, slides in. Otherwise, pretty straightforward in terms of assembly. So now we're going to pack it in with grease, slide over the boot, and we're good. Does boot. The last thing we want to do is chisel the lip back down. It closes off the dust boot so it can't move anymore. And then we're going to put a little bit of silicone on top. It seals the joint. Now, you don't really have to do this, but uh, I think it really helps. Depending on how you close this up, you can put some of the silicone inside, actually, where the O-ring is. But I made a mistake, I put some grease on the inside of this, so I wasn't going to clean it up again. So the O-ring is still going to sit there. It's going to seal against the surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some gasket maker to close off this slip here. So the idea is to prevent any moisture from going in. That's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully, I was able to save you some money. This is a non-serviceable item according to Mercedes. Frankly, I'm not really sure why. Once you know the location of those uh, hidden lock rings, this is at best a two, three uh, hour service with some very, very basic uh, tools that you probably already have in your garage and some paper clips that are probably sitting in your uh, house somewhere. The math on this doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Mercedes wants you to spend $1,500 to replace a $50 bearing that it should be a serviceable item on pretty much any car that I've ever had, you know, these have been in pretty bad condition. They've had to uh, be replaced. So um, the thing is, it, it already is uh, serviceable. Like you saw yourself, we didn't have to cut anything. We didn't have to weld anything. Like this is a fairly easy procedure to remove this and swap this bearing out. So all this to say, um, hopefully you don't have to spend that kind of money uh, going forward. I will share the link below for the bearing uh, and where you can find it. And the rest of the drive shaft procedure is very straightforward. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like what you see, click the thumbs up. I'm looking forward to your comments below. Have you done this before? Have you encountered this uh, issue? Do you have a better way of doing this? Let me know. 
Um, and if you want to see more of these videos, click subscribe because I've got quite a few more uh, do-it-yourself sort of short videos coming up for any of the X164, W164 platforms that I hope you will like. All right, I'll see you guys next time.